This current video is showing you the entire history of the Nightfall systems that we've had in Destiny 2 ever since 2017 in September, which they've changed drastically since then. But I'm going to go from the start and work my way up. When looking back uh, on how Nightfalls used to be, I've looked all the way throughout the, throughout the systems that we've had. Um, there's been five major times, moments, should we say, where the Nightfall has changed drastically. There's been minor changes in between DLCs, which I won't really talk about too much, exactly what date that was, because it'd be just too difficult for me to sort of go into the patch notes and look at all that. I don't want to really do that. I just want to talk about the major changes we've had at each time, which is five times. So the first instance was obviously when the game, which isn't the change, this is how the game launched from 2017, September to 2018, February, between that time. So this is where we had normal nightfalls and prestige nightfalls. These nightfalls were fixed modifiers. So you see in footage of South Dune Song, this is just an example. Uh, this is solo footage of me doing it. Uh, this is normal, not prestige. But basically the normal mode and the prestige mode both had similar, they had the same modifiers I believe. I think Iron was on prestige. Um, but they were basically, they had time. Now on Prestige the timer was less than normal difficulty. Meaning that the Prestige mode was harder, the ad hit harder, the, it was a higher power level, stuff like that. Um, so this is what the system was then. Um, was it, how does it compare to now? Well, let me just put it this way, a lot of Prestige Nightfalls that um, were available when the game launched a lot of people couldn't solo them now Grandmaster solos are ten a penny there's people doing them all the time so what does that tell you? it tells you that the time constraint on, on Nightfalls is a mechanic that limits certain players being able to complete them because of the timer it, it means that your play style has to adjust to that time if there's no timer then it doesn't matter you can just sit back also, there was other unique modifiers like um, Vex Rings, you're going to see in the footage here. This was Inverted Spire. So, there was, there was, as I said, there was fixed modifiers for each Nightfall, but each Nightfall had its own way of doing it. So, Vex Rings was only on Inverted Spire and might have been another one as well. Um, but it was on Inverted Spire, whereas Torrent, I remember Torrent, uh, the Torrent modifier, which gives us increased ability regen was on Pyramidian stuff like that so there was just set modifiers for each nightfall so when you when that nightfall came around you knew what it was about sort of thing um, but this is what it was like this is what the state of the game was it was double primary so double primary heavy that's what we had and the game was slow the ability regen was slow all this changed like throughout uh, later updates um, but this modifier was very interesting so you got time back as I said Nightfall was timed, but you got time back from the rings. So it, there was an art to perfecting of when to get the rings and when not. This is a prestige Nightfall solo. This was ultra difficult. This was on the pyramid, and as you can see, the timer on the bottom right hand screen, 1 minute 30 um, left. This was, in my books, um, one of the hardest in terms of modes, not just this Nightfall, like like all the prestige Nightfalls were difficult because of the time constraints. Um, yes, there was no scoring, so you could effectively skip ads, but it was actually a requirement to do this. For, for Even for fire teams would struggle with these prestige Nightfalls. As I said, the ads hit hard, you know, depending on what the modifier was, um, would make them all too difficult. But this is just gameplay of that. I've shown you a solo prestige. Um, as I said, I really enjoyed. For me personally, the the two the 2017 nightfalls when the game first launched were the fun were some of the funnest times I had in Destiny because even though the game was bad, obviously it launched with so much. Uh, whereas now we don't get uh, a DLC expansion with four planets and ten strikes. So what we got then, we didn't realise how good we had it, is the truth of it. 
Uh, as you can see, obviously, I've died a couple of times, um, which wouldn't um, go well on Grandmaster. Obviously, if it was solar, I would go to Orbit. So there is that. So that is one thing that where the Prestige now falls maybe were easier because you didn't go to Orbit. But you did go to Orbit if you didn't make the time. As you can see there, I completed that with five seconds literally left. This was way back when, as I said, this, was, this is very old footage. So once February hit, 2018, shortly after Curse of Osiris, we then fluctuated to <clears throat> a different Nightfall system where the emphasis wasn't skipping ads or getting the Nightfall done within a certain timer. The timer would now be ticking up, not down, meaning that it was a scored Nightfall. They introduced strike-specific loot, like a DFA, duty bound that you could farm, all that stuff. But the Nightfall Challenge card was really good. As of right now, when it launched, the card was in its best spot because all you really picked was a singe you had extinguish on there and you can alter the power level handicap the more power handicap you had the higher your times multiplier score would be therefore you get the threshold score which right now did this was day one footage of that particular time when the nightfall card actually launched which as i said was late february 2018 <clears throat> um but as i said it was really good in a really good spot when it launched, um, I remember feeling good about it, thinking this is really good, this is an improvement. However, I did like the Prestige Nightfall timer that we had, which I wish they had included on the card as well, a time element to the card. That would have been good. But they didn't go that route because it was a different way of doing it. These Nightfalls I really liked. Uh, even in a team, you had to communicate well. It meant that you could solo all of them now, because the prestige nightfalls, the biggest thing was the time. People couldn't just get the time in. Especially things like Salathurn Song. There was only two people in the world that actually ever soloed prestige Salathurn Song. Not normal, prestige. There's only actually two players, Destiny 2 players, that actually ever done that. Down on YouTube, whether somebody done that who didn't upload it. But I would very much doubt it, because if they did, they would be uploading it. Because it was such a difficult thing to do. Uh, there was a couple of Prestige Nightfalls easier than others, the uh, one versions, um, but these were also very difficult. Now you're going to see footage of us one phase in a Prestige Nightfall boss without heavyweight. This was before heavyweight was released, and you'll just ready, see the I'm impact ready. of it. Okay. No nades ready. this. Try no nades this time on the boss. Yeah. Would you believe it, dude? There's an for all here. Just wait on it. Just wait on it. Not on point. 72. 72 again? There's, there we go. One face. There we go. Finally. Whoa. And, and I got a masterworks. I got masterwork weapon too. Not, Not weapon. That. Just armor. Alright, I want the drop as a result of this. That would be <laughs> so cool. Oh, I got a shit turn now. Nah. There oh, you go. I'm saving that one. It's a 9. So as you saw from that footage, it was a real challenging thing to do to actually solo one phase of Prestige Night 4 boss, let alone beat one. That was, as I said before, heavyweight. Now I'm showing you the card. I don't have footage of the first edition card, like handy. Okay, This is what the card turned into, ends up turning into. You end up being able to alter a couple more things. You can put match game on there. You can put um, different singes, which you could already do, I guess. There was heavyweight. Um, Grenadia, Momentum, which was a modifier that just um, started off a whole trend and led into something that Bungie would do secretly with an emblem um, called After the Nightfall, which I'll talk about coming up. As you can see, I'm just playing around with the card, showing you how it worked. And as I said, it was a very good idea. All they needed to do was remove Heavyweight, Grenadia, all that stuff, because they were too powerful, heavyweight especially, being able to one phase bosses. It turned the art of one phase and bosses stupid. As I said, between February 2018 and May 2018, between that sweet spot of time, if a team could one phase a prestige nightfall boss, which was a couple of players uploading those types of videos, Dato and things like that, if you could do stuff like that, 
that was very um, good. It was. It took a lot of skill, a coordination, getting debuffs, buffs with your team to pull that sort of stuff off. That's what made it so good. But the downfall of the Nightfall Challenge card would come when the Warmind DLC come out. That's when I said they, they added these modifiers, heavyweight and stuff. And when they first launched, they were amazing. It enabled solo players to able to one-phase Nightfall bosses which for the most part was very fun, one of the funnest times I've had in this game for a long time. Like, I haven't had as much fun back then in, in ages, especially with the way Ordeal Nightfalls work now. But anyways, that's the footage of the card there showing you how that worked. So now the Warmind DLC launches, as I said, with the Nightfall Challenge card getting amended uh, while that sort of DLC comes out. Um, basically, this adds, as I said, Heavyweight, Grenadier, and Brawler. Heavyweight being especially very important. As you can see, this is me using the Icolos Shotgun when it was in the heavy slot, just casually one phase and a Nightfall boss on Prestige which you, should, you shouldn't be able to be doing that. But at the time when it launched, it was something new. It's like, oh, well, you can actually do this. So it was very good for the time. For that brief period of time, the first month or two going into it while it was launching, it was a good idea. But as we all know, Nightfalls are part of Endgame. You've got dungeons, you've got raids, and you've got Nightfalls. Nightfalls shouldn't be... You shouldn't be able to do certain things uh, and this is where, as I said, this is why Bungie ended up changing the system eventually, which wouldn't be for a while. They didn't even change it in Forsaken. There might have been some modifiers, uh, their percentages changed, you know, their multipliers. I remember Blackout being adjusted. Blackout was a high or a low, quite a low modifier, and then that got adjusted. So it was very minor adjustments, but as I said, I'm not really going to concentrate too much on the minor stuff. This is just me showing you footage of utilising the momentum heavyweight combo, which is a thing that speedrunners would love to use. And I, even myself, I was massively into speedrunning the nightfalls and getting, you know, some world record times, which I did. Some of my times got beaten easily by a lot of PC players or even some players on console. But it was something I was into at the time. But... Bungie had secretly put something in the game during, I think, when Forsaken launched. If I was to check light.gg, you'd be able to find out. But essentially, they added a secret emblem for speedrun. But this is the classic speedrun and classic style what you'd use. You'd pick the singe is favourable to you. You'd pick momentum and you'd pick heavyweight. What does momentum do? Well, it, it increases health regen while you're sprinting, meaning that... It's pro skip and adds, which obviously they don't want you doing that, and we shouldn't be doing that to a certain extent. But it was something that was rife in Destiny 1. And I think there's a place for it where you can skip adds in the game. Maybe not Nightfalls, maybe in Strikes, sure, or maybe just the base Nightfall, you should be allowed to do that at times. But some things you could do with it was absurd. This is my Corrupted when I got a world record run on that for console not PC, this was sort of before certain additional strats were found out, I guess, uh, but at the time when I made this, six minutes something, uh, but it's just shown you the power of what momentum was, and why it was destroying the skill to nightfalls, I guess, but at the same time, it kicked off a genre for me, and a lot of other players of speedrun and nightfalls, a lot of people speedrun daily missions, which is a thing, amongst elite players who do that going for like you know world record times and stuff but i was never into that i was always into the nightfalls which i was speedrunning them before momentum ever came out so just bear that in mind i didn't just start doing it because momentum's here which we never knew as soon as the card launched people didn't realize momentum was going to be an actual great thing from the get-go but this as i say it's just me showing you Footage of me literally just skipping all the stuff um, in the nightfall, which otherwise you wouldn't be able to do this. So it was 
the reason why Bungie changed the nightfall system is because of bad design of momentum. Heavyweight was too powerful, but it was meant heavyweight was should have been just a modifier for strikes, or they could have toned heavyweight down and maybe included specialist, which is a special weapon buff from Destiny One, or even the primary buff where your kinetic weapon does more damage. They should have just added more and maybe adjusted it and it heavily impacted your score massively. If they had fine tuned this way of doing nightfalls, because they made a lot of bad decisions, then it would be probably be better than what we've got now. What we've got now has turned into just prioritizing champs. Champion is the main mechanic of anything that you do. And I'll get into it more sort of at the end when we get into it. But this is just me showing you. This is when we, everyone used to use 1,000 voices. It used, it used to absolutely wreck bosses and stuff. But that was a run on that. And the next clip, I believe, is going to be showing you the after the Nightfall MM. So, as I was saying, I think Bungie had maybe seen a lot of people speedrun and stuff. So they added in Forsaken that you had to speedrun all the Nightfalls to obtain a secret ultra rare emblem that is actually the rarest emblem in the game because you cannot get it anymore. It's one of the, or one of the rarest emblems and it was called After the Nightfall. It was a big secret and it only just come out. It, it took a couple of months to come out. They added it in Forsaken. It was there for ages. Um, but you had to speedrun all the Nightfalls and it was averaged out on a time. A lot of people said there was a scoring system to it. And the exact details to the mechanics of this emblem still aren't 100% known today. But it's to do with Spear and Nightfalls, which is one of the best things that they ever done with emblems uh, for that sort of thing. Going back to Scored Nightfalls. Now, the reason why I still think Scored Nightfalls, like purely Scored Nightfalls, would be better than what we've got now better than just having you know you've got your 100k pinnacle reward that's what it is right now that's just to get your pinnacle you can get this on legend you can get it on adept difficulty on ordeal nightfalls that we have now that's not a scored nightfall to me what they could have done and should do in the future is have leaderboards in-game leaderboards or somewhere to look on who's got the highest nightfall you can look on uh, certain things but have something in-game to tell you what's the highest ranked team for the score for that nightfall. This is footage of me sh uh, showing um, the highest solo score for like any score ever gotten. I know this is 100% fact because I double checked it before this nightfall system had went away and checked that had anyone got higher. So this is this is if not the highest score recorded on YouTube solo during this era of Nightfalls um, which the card got silly and this card did get bu uh, bugged at times where you weren't getting handicapped this wasn't bugged when I'm doing the card right now it wasn't bugged uh, to that extent but this is just as I say showing footage uh, and this I remember doing this run and I farmed all week to get this score I'd got over three, I'd seen a dude got 300,000 points solo and he got the world's first 300k solo. I remember watching that and watching his run and I saw his run and I thought I can improve this massively. Uh, and I did and I ended up getting 360, 370k. Very good and that's just an example, I imagine it in a team, it's just an, an example of going for the super high score but there was no real reward for doing so. And that was the downside of it, um, which was a missed opportunity. Now, another thing I want to talk about is max handicap nightfalls, which were doable when the card with the card. So you can see that I've got a 259 power handicap. If you'd done 260, you couldn't do any damage to ads. If you'd done this, everything in the game would just about one shot you. Worse than Grandmasters, because the ads would have skulls. People don't know how the power level system works in Destiny. You've got skulls, swords, and enemy icons. The enemy icon, if it's fallen, it means you're at power. 
a sword means you're 10 powers under and a skull means you're 20 plus. They changed the power level system in Charaki, but when you're fighting against skulled enemies, that is worse than Grandmaster. People just look at the word Grandmaster and it sounds cool and they say, oh, this is good. Well, no, it's not because you want to be fighting skulled enemies. As you can see, I'm fighting skull ogres there. I do have heavyweight on this footage, so bear that in mind. But this was just me solo when I, uh, I maxed Handicap Nightfall. But if they truly want to make Nightfalls an end game thing, they need to increase the power of Handicap for the enemies more than what it is. The enemies need to be skulls, not swords. If they really want to go. But they need to stop doing income and soul uh, increased and all that stuff. That was just footage of a Max Handicap Nightfall though. So now we're into Sharakeeb 2019, they end up changing the Nightfalls to Ordeal Nightfall, the Ordeal Nightfall system. I could have showed a Sharakeeb strike, but I wanted to show an instance where there's a lot of champions. And not only that, nothing's changed with the Nightfall system ever since Sharakeeb launched. Champions, in terms of vulnerability, maybe has changed, but the mechanics of it is the same. So what they went with is a hybrid system. They still want score from what they used to do. Score still matters for your pinnacle reward. They still want to get the 100k. So you've got that. The time is still going up. It's not going down like in 2017, which means the emphasis on, is on getting as many ads as you can within the allotted time. However, they've increased the amount of time that you need to get score. So they've give you they've give you way more time to do stuff because they've just ambushed you with champions so in this particular nightfall i'm doing right now i can't mind how many champions that there is in glassware but there's at least 26 7 champions in here now they know people solo nightfalls right so why have they done why have they done that because now what you've done is if you're noticing a trend the nightfall the idea of a nightfall is changing to dungeon time like the activity wise so a dungeon solo should take i mean obviously it depends on the dungeon but let's take prophecy as the golden standard that's dungeon generally i'm not talking about speed runners the speed runners who can do insane times i'm not talking about those but generally for the average player it's going to take them 50 minutes to get a solo flawless prophecy done nightfalls are taken that and longer if it's grandmaster so why why have we got nightfalls to this level well because they've heavily weighted to the champion mechanic which relies on unstoppable rounds anti-barrier um overload which is based on seasonal mods so this is when they fully invested into the seasonal way of playing things the problem is if it's anti-barrier sidearm anti-barrier smg things like this then some people just get annoyed with that because they can't use the weapons they want at least we could use the weapons we wanted to use in the older system all they needed to do with the older system was just correct a lot of situations where the knight, the loot must be tied to score. If you don't get the score, you don't get the loot you want. That's what they could have done with it. But obviously they didn't. But this is the system we're on now and it hasn't changed since then. So now we're to April 2020 where they release Grandmaster difficulty on the Ordeal Nightfalls. So previously we had Adept, Hero, Legend, Master. Master was the highest difficulty you could go. Now it's Grandmaster, which means you're 20 power levels under. Contest mode is on, which they use from raids. Right? Uh, contest mode is on, so you can never overpower level a Grandmaster, which is a good idea on paper. On paper, that sounds really good. But in theory, it doesn't. Because for the end game content, you want to bring the best stuff. Question, the thing is about that is, there's only few and far between uh, types of weapons that are be um, catered to this. Um, for example, I'll just give you this. Grandmaster Nightfalls require 
weapons with large magazines, a lot of DPS in them, damage over time. If you have a weapon that's low on magazine size, like Sleeper Simulant, 1000 Voices, things like that, but do high burst damage per shot, doesn't matter. You need to kill 25 to 30 champions in that nightfall, your heavy weapon isn't going to do you justice. So, our Grandmasters healthy for, for loadouts, no they're not, because you're restricted to a certain type of champion mod and that champion mod rotates on a seasonal base so it's an so we we've been lucky this season we've had anti barrier scout or love bow the best combination you can probably have come to um another season where you had anti barrier sidearm overload or a rifle what's it all this you're limiting people so now you're making everybody try to do youtube style content and putting themselves at a risk and they're saying that's watchable. It's just not. Solo GMs this season have been really good because as I said, the seasonal mods are good and it's dictated by that, which I've always said, they need to stop doing that. Just have all the mods available to us uh, so we can experiment. And also, rely, don't rely on ability uh, seasonal mods to carry it, like Inferno Whip. We're not gonna use Inferno Whip in Grandmasters because you get one shot off a stomp and you're not going to use stuff like that, or may you maybe overload nades, yeah, sure. But the way the Grandmasters are designed, it's all about the champions, it's not about the boss fights. This is where I think they need to sort of come back to where the, the strike bosses are, buff their HP, make them tanky like they were in day one, come away from the champions, have the champion as a mechanic, have the seasonal mods all year round, you choose what you want. Fair enough, if the meta's going to be a certain meta where everyone picks this seasonal mod every time then change it buff them nerf them that's all they would need to do but that was the entire history of all the nightfall systems in destiny 2 enjoy <laughs>